And now onto our dinosaur of the day, Oshala Ia, which was a request from Jaybird via our Patreon and Discord, so thanks. Oshala Ia was a spinosaurid that lived in the late Cretaceous about 100.5 to 93.9 million years ago in what is now northeastern Brazil, in the Alcantara Formation. Not many bones have been found, but it probably looked like other spinosaurs. It's closely related to Spinosaurus. It may have been a junior synonym of Spinosaurus. It had this elongated jaw. It probably had short back legs, robust arms, and a long tail. It's unclear if it had a sail on its back because none of those fossils have been found. But if it turns out to be a junior synonym to Spinosaurus, then it probably did have the sail. Then we'll know exactly what it looked like because it'll just be Spinosaurus. That's true. Although I shouldn't say exactly because we don't really know that much about how Spinosaurus looked. It's always changing. <laughs> but we're learning more every year. That's true. The skull of Oshalaia is estimated to be 4.4 feet or 1.35 meters long. Spinosaurus skull, as a comparison, has been estimated to be 5.25 to 5.75 feet or 1.6 to 2.1 meters long. And we go into way more detail about Spinosaurus in episode 300 if you want to hear about the almost most recent news. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty up to date. So Oshala Ia is about a foot shorter, head only, is yeah. about a foot shorter? Yeah. Oshala Ia is estimated to be in total 39 to 46 feet or 12 to 14 meters long. That's based on comparing its snout to the snout of MSNM V4047, which is a very large Spinosaurus CF found in 2005. And I think it was the only Spinosaurus it could be compared to at the time. And CF, just for reference, means hard to identify. Oh, for the species? Yeah, for Spinosaurus CF, for the snout. Oshalaia is estimated to weigh five to seven tons. It had teeth that were not serrated. It probably ate fish, but it may have also eaten dinosaurs and pterosaurs. That's based on evidence from other spinosaurids, which we've talked about. The fossils of Oshalaia were found in 1999 on Casual Island. Two partial skull bones were found, and then it was described in 2011 by Alexander Kellner and others. The type and only species is Oshalaia quilomboensis. The genus name refers to the African deity Oshala. And according to the paper describing Oshalaia, quote, the most respected masculine deity in the African pantheon introduced in Brazil during slavery, end quote. The species name refers to the Brazilian Quilombo settlements, where descendants of former Brazilian slaves live, some of which were on Casual Island. The holotype of Oshalaia was found in situ and includes the fused premaxillae, which is the front of the snout. An incomplete left maxilla or upper jaw has also been referred to Oshalaia. The holotype was a rare find because strong tides eroded many fossils at the site where it was found. Oh, so there might have been more before. Could have gotten washed out to sea before they got there. Could be. A lot, like hundreds of spinosaurid teeth, though, have been found in the same area. Wow. Which, as we talked about recently, spinosaurids, they just had a lot of teeth. They were dropping teeth like crazy. <laughs> yeah. The partial skull and teeth had distinct features, such as, well, yeah, we'll get into that, such as two replacement teeth in each socket and a more rounded tip of the snout. But as we talked about just two episodes ago, 409, in the recent spinosaurid teeth paper, spinosaurids had two replacement teeth. So I'm not sure how distinct of a feature this is. Uh-oh, if that's part of what they're hanging the hat on of this being a unique genus. Yeah, although that's a really recent paper, so. Yeah, but it, it could lose, it could get synonymized. It could. Oshalia had seven premaxillary teeth, but MSNM V4047, that Spinosaurus CF that it was compared to only had six premaxillary teeth. It's a slight difference. Yeah. 
In 2020, Robert Smith and others found Oshalaia didn't have enough distinct features to be its own taxon and instead said any differences were due to individual variation and that it was a junior synonym of Spinosaurus. And if that's true, that would mean Spinosaurus had a wider distribution than we previously thought because we would have thought before it was only found in what's now Africa. Yeah, that's pretty cool because, well, at the time... South America was still basically connected to Africa, but Brazil was still much farther south. Mm -hmm. So if it was anywhere in Brazil, that means that it would have been in Morocco, Egypt, and down in Brazil. That's a very wide range. Right, similar animals and plants have been found in the Kemkem -Kem beds of Morocco from the same time period. Hmm. And yeah, like you're saying, Africa and South America, they used to be connected as Gondwana parts of it were still connected during this time period. Yeah, it's hard to say exactly what, but since we think Spinosaurus was an okay swimmer, mm -hmm. it might not have been quite as big of an obstacle as maybe to other dinosaurs. Yeah. So I'm not sure what the consensus is yet on if it's a, considered to be a junior synonym or its own. It seems like it might get synonymized. Well, it kind of did in 2020. Oshalaia, the fossils were at the National Museum of Rio de Janeiro, but they might have been destroyed in the 2018 fire. This is very hard to confirm. Oh, no. Another Spinosaurus got destroyed and the the holotype, at least, and Oshalaia also might have been destroyed. Mm -hmm. That's a bummer. Well, Oshalaia, it lived in a tropical forested area with lots of conifers, and the area was surrounded by an arid landscape. And other dinosaurs that lived around the same time and place included Carcharodontosaurids, Dromaeosaurs, sauropods, theropods. Other additional animals included pterosaurs, crocodilomorphs, turtles, and fish. And you can see Oshalaia in the game Jurassic World Primal Ops. And now for our fun fact. I took it over again this episode. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> We had fun with our <laughs> connecting things to dinosaurs. That scratched my itch of random research. <laughs> <laughs> so just for fun, I was thinking if dinosaurs had NASA, they might have avoided extinction. That is very random. Yeah. <laughs> and it's because there was the really big news recently about DART, which I'm sure a lot of people already know about. Oh, I see. Yeah, because NASA has achieved potentially helping to avoid extinction for humans. Yes, exactly. So DART, it's the Double Asteroid Redirection Test. It's a NASA spacecraft that crashed into an asteroid's moon on purpose to see if it could change the asteroid's direction in case, you know, we need to in the future. Oh, it's just an asteroid's moon, mm -hmm. not the asteroid itself? Exactly. Weird. So the moon is named Dimorphos. That means two forms. It's about... 525 feet or 160 meters in diameter, which is similar in size to an asteroid that could be very bad for Earth hmm. if it hit. And then the asteroid is named Didymos, which means twin, and that refers to the system that consists of an asteroid and a moon. So since there's this asteroid and the moon, that's how they got the name. And that's about 2,560 feet or 780 meters across. That's half a mile. That's big. Yeah. It's a near-Earth object, which means it's within 30 million miles of Earth. <laughs> it doesn't seem that near, but I guess, I guess in space, yeah. that's near. The good news is it's no threat to Earth, and that is what made it so perfect for testing on. See if we can make it a threat for Earth. <laughs> <laughs> no, they made sure they didn't. Okay, good. <laughs> but they did want to test this in case at some point we need to avoid another dinosaur extinction level event. Mm -hmm. It's the first time we've ever done this, but, you know, we've in sci-fi it's been done. Think Armageddon and Deep Impact, those movies that both came out in 1998. Yeah, that was all the rage in the late 90s. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> now, DART launched in November of 2021 the DART spacecraft, and it weighed about 1,260 pounds or 570 kilograms when it hit Dimorphos, and it hit it at about 13,400 miles per hour or 21,600 kilometers per hour. That's fast. Yeah. It was too small 
however, to destroy Dimorphos, but the goal was to change Dimorphos's speed and the direction that it was heading. And it's going to change its speed, or it has changed its speed by 1% and shifted it a bit. Hmm. There were cameras to see before and after the impact and some really cool images that have come out from just before the impact where we saw that Dimorphos is egg-shaped and covered in boulders. Scientists are going to be doing a lot of observations in the coming years to see how things changed. We're already hearing about a trail of like a 6,000-mile trail of debris. Oh, geez. Yeah, which looks pretty in pictures. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash inodino or click the link on the left. 